Hello, person. What I'd like to do today is honor all of the improvements from the beta version. Thanks to feedback from you players. There's actually backstory to this video. Look at this, I wrote this whole script and then I hated it. So I'm gonna do this my way. And hey, we're going back in time here. We're going back into the time machine called Git. We're using the Git time machine to go back in time to get the stuff before we did the beta. I don't have a calendar in my head. This is the commit we want. All right, let's get this commit. Git, check out. We've gone back in time. We've checked out a version of the game from October 13th, a whole two and a half months ago. My friend came over and played the beta, and I sat down watching him play, and I tried to be as quiet as possible and just let him play. Of course, I had to say stuff along the way. But let's go ahead and play the game in this state. Let's, uh, this is going to be a crazy thing for me. Just crashed right away. I forget the dangers of going back in time. That's fine. It's fine. I'm totally fine. I can wait. I'm good. The beginning of our story starts with right before the beta version. And this was the Thursday before the game was supposed to launch on Saturday. He started playing the game and quickly we both realized that it was way too easy. He found a whole bunch of exploits. As soon as he got the jump ability, he was able to jump, 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 jump. Straight up in the air, endless double jumps. And that was quite funny to watch. It was just way too easy to just cruise through. Wraithbinder, that was the challenge before me, was to get the game to be balanced. Where you had enough challenge, where it wasn't too easy, that it was difficult to even beat the boss on the first try. Like, you needed that, that sense of power progression where you are leveling up your character, and it, you need to level up your character to even get to beat the boss. This is the bug that my friend found. You can just endlessly double jump forever! It's fun. Fairly certain this is the dungeon I wanted. So, person, we've gone backwards in time all the way to October 13th to show you how much the old version sucked. Perhaps what I'll do in the long run is to create some kind of relic that enables you to double jump with your regular jump ability. It's way too easy. In fact, look, I'm just like barely pressing the button every once in a while. Hey, it worked. Whoa, sweet. First try. Nice. Okay, we've fast-forwarded in time a little bit. This is about one week into the beta version, and already things have started to improve. You can't double jump endlessly. All right, here's one improvement. You have to hold Y to actually unlock things. That's pretty cool, because before, you would walk up to a door, and it would automatically use your key, which was weird. And what the heck am I trying to tell you here? I was like, okay, I've got two weeks that this beta is running, and I've got 750 things I gotta get done. Before the beta, you would begin your run with zero abilities. Several players commented that was not very fun. So I didn't want to remove dungeons from the game, and also I didn't want to remove the joy of discovery. The solution was to do this, where the player starts with this ability called Punch. And this Punch ability is less powerful than the Blade ability. Let's see, we're doing minus one damage but when I pick up the blade ability now I'm doing minus two minus three that satisfies the needs right there first of all you get to as a player you start with the ability to attack and secondly you can still find a better ability when you're in the dungeons and it's the same for this blink ability I want to thank everybody that sent all of their feedback over because man without you guys playing this I would have just been lost as a game developer, it's really easy to develop blind spots to where your game needs work. And as soon as you watch other people play, it's like, whoa, that needs to get fixed. Or that needs to be better. That needs to be clearer. So thank you, players. Thank you for your, all your awesome feedback on the beta. Balancing all the enemies was a constant process throughout the beta version. Making sure that enemies were not too easy and that they scaled up in difficulty as you went through the dungeons. That was the key to making sure Wraithbinder is really fun. You clear a room of all the enemies, it generates a little reward item. So this time I got plus 25 experience, and that uh, that's just another little incentive for you to actually clear rooms in a dungeon. I gotta thank my friend Sam, he's the one that came up with the idea for the starting abilities. I have the lightning, which gives me about a 10% chance to be a lightning attack. And lightning aims to any nearby enemies. Here's the problem with all the elements. In the old beta version, it would randomly use your mana. You'd be like, what the hell just happened? I was just sitting here fighting some enemies. I had 60 mana, and all of a sudden I have zero mana. What the heck is going on? 
People were up in arms about it. People were actually mad. The players were like, what the hell's going on here? This sucks. So that was a big thing that got improved. It now doesn't use any mana whenever you randomly proc an element, like lightning, fire, ice, or acid. Oh, the blink ability having some iframes. Here we go, here's some enemies. I'm gonna use the boots and show that we have some iframes. Okay, I have 49 health. We still have 49 health. The thing is, you have about a half second where when you first use a dodge, the boots, or the blink ability, you're invincible for that fraction of a second, which is really helpful when there's lots of enemies on the screen. Oh, this is really cool. The boots being able to choose a direction. Look at my git log. Isn't this beautiful? How much git logging did I do? Look at this. It's gorgeous. Ah, I love this. Let's go to this one. Get to check out that one. There we go. Okay, then let's rebuild. This is actually illustrating another thing that got uh, improved with the beta was enemies telegraphing their attacks. So check it out. This guy, whenever he's about to attack, he gets a little exclamation point above his head and a red square appears. And then he also has a swoosh animation as he actually does his attack. And you notice that the game actually zoomed in a tiny bit when, when we were fighting that enemy, the being able to change the direction of the blink. So this is a really powerful thing. If I'm facing the, here towards the right, and I want to start using my blink ability or my boots or whatever to the left. Yeah, there we go, it totally worked. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm hold, I'm pressing the boots button, which is X, right? It waits until you actually press a direction to be able to be facing in a certain direction and then blink in a different direction. So I'm facing to the right and I blink to the left to be able to dodge more effectively when you're fighting enemies. So that's a big improvement. So think about this. If you're trying to run with your thumb on the X button and then you also want to use your ranged, button, ranged weapon as B, it's super hard. I have to do some weird finger gymnastics to try and make that happen. So I made it a easier to use your ranged weapon. You can run and throw your boomerang or shoot your bow. Oh, and there's the new enemy that's a, a ranged weapon guy. Hopefully we find one of these guys in the next dungeon. We got Reflector. What we need is an enemy. Found a grenade. Sweet. Oh, is it one of these guys? Yes, okay, here we have one of these archer guys in the upper right corner. So that's a new enemy type, and it made things a little bit more fun, because now you've got a different kind of enemy, one that instead of just rushing you, he stands back and uses a ranged weapon, which makes the game more fun. You know what I mean? Fun like the good kind of fun. Okay. He's got, this guy right here is fun too to fight. He's very tough. We've got lots of health. Maybe I should throw a grenade at this guy. Hmm? Oh, that helped. Yes! That was fun. That was very fun. I'm telling you, balancing the game, the difficulty of all the enemies was a, a trick. And we had to check out how the camera moves here. In the earlier versions of the beta, it would actually camera lock to a certain area. The problem was, if you're fighting an enemy right here, the enemy, you'd be having this whole battle, like, oh, fight this guy! And the camera would be like, whoa, I'm on the left, and the camera would be like, I'm gonna be on the right now! And they'd be like, oh, no, let's go back over the left! I just turned off the whole feature for now and made it so that the camera just follows the player all the time. I would really like to get back to the point where we have a camera stop for certain types of things. That's a feature I have planned where you get into a room and the doors lock. Maybe that's a great way to use the camera locking feature. So, uh, I'm trying to use my controller to scroll up and down. You can't vim with your controller, man! You can't, what are you? You can't what, do it again! <laughs> I'm trying to like... Scroll Vim text with my joystick, my left joystick. It's not working. This game doesn't work. Vim doesn't work at all. It's the, oh, what? Save and quit and quit and save and quit and exit and no more uh, playing. The window size 5120. I think this is what we want. There, we got ultra wide support. Isn't that neat? it would be like, whoa, what the heck's going on? Am I on acid? You, be, uh, you, you pretty much are on acid, I'm sure, but this is not the acid. This is the video game. The video game's its fault, not, not yours, not the acids. Look at this, we're playing Wraithbinder and it's in ultra wide mode. Press the enter. There we go. I pressed the Did you see that? I just chatted. I'm such a good streamer. Thank you again, Dommy Killer. This was a really 
perilous thing if you were to get stuck on a boots bridge. We'll try one, because then we can go to two afterwards. Excellent thinking, me. Wow, am I a genius? No, I'm not a genius. I'm just a person. Let's run around and see if we can find where the boots... Is it over here? Yes, there's the boots bridge! Went right to it. It's something where you have to hold down your boots ability and use it to run across. So I can go, Wah! I run across this and I'm fine. But if I stop in the middle, I fall, and I have to go back to where I last was. The issue was, you would stop running in the middle of the boots bridge, and your character would just keep teleporting right back onto the boots bridge where you fell last time, and uh, you would just keep teleporting forever, and you'd be stuck. Players were like, I got stuck, and I couldn't, I kept working, and I was like, I couldn't do it, and uh, I was really frustrated. So this ends a lot of frustrations for players, to be able to consistently, you never get stuck warping back to the same spot. What did I learn during the beta version? One of the biggest things I learned while playing the beta was that it's so helpful to get people's feedback in video form. Thank you to Tanker Smash for sending me his video commentaries, playing his very first time ever playing Wraithbinder, he recorded an hour of playing and gave me commentary. As if it was a live stream to just me. And it was one of the most helpful things I've ever received. Also thank you to many other players too that sent me videos and Discord comments and everything. All of it incredibly helpful. One of the biggest things I learned through doing this two week beta period was that Listening to players makes your video game better. I know that sounds simple there, but it's easy as a game developer to develop an ego and think, you know what, I know what's best for this video game. Really, sometimes you don't. As a game developer, it's easy to develop blind spots and you don't see these little things that everyone else sees. Everyone else plays it and goes, what the hell? Look at this, this is, here's a little blind spot I had. Look how much chaos there is on the screen right here. Can you tell what's actually going on? Can you tell where the player is? That's something that I was blind to, but players pointed it out during the beta period, and it was so helpful. I've already been working on this, making it so particles are a lot clearer and the player doesn't get occluded by certain things. So, that, so a lot of things have improved since then, but these are the things that I was blind to. So listening to players is valuable, especially when your ego says otherwise. If you get this thought in your brain like, oh my god, I'm, uh, I know what's best, that's definitely when you need to listen to players even more. Okay, another thing I learned from the beta was that incorporating feedback takes a lot of time. Of the, of the 12 work days during the two week beta period, I think four entire days were spent just responding to players, absorbing their feedback, and prioritizing, not even working on the feedback, just getting the feedback in order. This is a very small group of players and I got tons of stuff listed. So that's one of the things on my mind. How the heck do I do this? And if you've got any thoughts, please tell me person in the comments or something. There's a thing called crunch time, right? It means that you're working more hours than, than usual and you're trying to really crunch to get your game out or to work on your beta or whatever, you're burning yourself out. I call that sixth gear, right? You're beyond fifth gear, you're in sixth gear at that point. And um, it could be helpful to use that mode, right? When you are when you really need to and you got stuff to get done, you've got players depending on you, you've got promises you made to people, you're like, I know, I got you player, I'm gonna make this better. And in sixth gear, you can get a lot more things done, but there is a price, right? So in the long run, it doesn't actually help you much to use sixth gear overall. It can help you in the short term in that you can really get a lot done in a short period. If there's some way I can incorporate everyone's feedback and get things done and get all my promises handled in the normal work week, then that's definitely preferable. So. Person, thanks for watching this little recap video of of my beta process. I've just went through a whole bunch of improvements that got made in the beta version, and uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching this.